So now that we've seen how file structs are used during normal operation, let's explore how file structs can be abused to gain arbitrary read or write. Previously, we mentioned that there are eight pointers inside of the file struct that are predominantly used to maintain a buffer state. And this buffer sits in between the program calls to the stream functions, such as fwrite, and the underlying syscall write, or between the underlying syscall read and the program calling the corresponding uh, stream function fread. And these pointers indicate the state of that buffer. And so the state of the pointers determines whether or not we need to, for instance, flush out a buffer or whether that buffer needs to get refilled. We need to call read and fill it in with new data if it's a read buffer. Now, we also mentioned that there's a flags field in the file struct. Some of the values that you can find in the flags field are shown here. The upper bits of the flags field will always contain the magic number hex f bad. And so when you first call f open, this is what you'll find in the flags field for the upper bits. The lower bits determine the kind of the mode of operation for that file. So you could have a file that's unbuffered, in which case we wouldn't even take advantage of that buffering that we've described so far. There are also uh, modes of operation where you cannot read or cannot write. And the reason for that is when you think about the pointers that exist to track the buffer state, if you could just arbitrarily read and write on any file, it would be very easy for these pointers to get mixed up and get into an invalid state. And so there are explicit uh, mode bits that are, exist in the flag that deny reading or deny writing. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of values that can be found in the flag, so definitely check out the link at the bottom of the slide uh, where you can find the source code uh, and see all of the possible values yourself. Now, one of the other fields that we did not mention, uh, but is definitely worth mentioning now, is the file number field. So within the file struct, there is also a file number. And this file number holds the file descriptor that or underpins kind of the file. So when we write to a file, it fills this buffer. When the buffer is filled, we need to flush it and write it out. And when we call write, we still need to interact with a file descriptor. So the file descriptor that will be used when interacting with this file is stored just as a number in the file struct. Keep that in mind. Now, we described that we want to gain arbitrary read and write. Well, when we think about how the kind of streaming library works, what does it do? Well, it either reads from a file to memory, right? It reads into that buffer that's located in memory or it writes from the buffer in memory out to a file. And whether or not it reads and what it reads or whether or not it writes and what it writes is determined entirely by the state of these buffer pointers. So if we can overwrite or gain control of these buffer pointers, we can control where the read or write occurs and whether it occurs. Now, to read from a file to arbitrary memory. We have to get the buffer into a very specific state. We have to set the flag values such that the file allows for reading. That makes some sense. Uh, we need to set the read pointer equal to the read end. We also need to set the buff base to be the location that we want to read into. The buff end must be the end point of where we are going to read. And finally, buff end minus buff base, which is the size of the buffer for all intents and purposes, must be larger than the number of bytes that we want to read. Because if the buffer isn't big enough to read something in, uh, the library will allocate a new buffer that is large enough to do so. So we want to make sure that buff end minus buff base is big enough to um, perform this read. So this is what reading looks like during normal operation. Read base is equal to read buff, read end is equal to buff end, and read pointer is somewhere in the middle because we've read something and we still have a ways to go. So 
what happens or what do we have to do with these pointers to get them into a state where we can read into a location of our choosing? Well, there were a lot of requirements here. And so we could go line by line and move them around and see, but in practice, we don't have to actually do that. Instead, it can just look like this. Every pointer can get set to null, except for buff base and buff end. Buff base should point to the beginning of where we want to read into. Buff end should point to the end of where we want um, to read into. And this will satisfy all of the requirements. So let's see that in action. So right here, I have a vulnerable C program. We'll run through it here real quick to understand what's going on. Uh, we have a global win variable. By default, it's set to zero. We have a win function that prints out you win if it happens to get called. Inside of main, we are just given a leak of the winvar address or the location of winvar. Uh, the program itself uh, is going to call fopen and open a file named secret file. Uh, it's going to be open for reading. We are then immediately given the ability to overwrite this file pointer. The program will then call fread on that file here. And it is going to read in 10 members of size one. So it's going to read in 10 bytes and it's going to read it into a buffer that is sitting here on the stack. In the event WinVar happens to have changed, we'll call Win, otherwise the program will exit. So if we compile this and run it, it exits cleanly, and if we give it a long enough value, it will say fault. So let's uh, write an exploit for this. So we're gonna start off with some boilerplate code from pwn import star, context arch, AMD 64. Uh, we're going to have some process P that is going to interact with a dot out. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna grab the leak. So we will receive until at, uh, we will then say winvar leak is equal to P received line, we drop the new line. Uh, and we read it in as hex. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna overwrite the uh, file struct, right? And so what do we do there? Well, Pwn Tools has a, an extremely helpful feature that I'm just gonna use right out the gate. So you can call file structure, and this will give you a Python object that represents the file struct. Let's take a look at that in IPython here, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna just write that exact same thing. And we see that this FP object has all of the same uh, members as the file struct that is used by the streams library. And we can set values and we see that is reflected in the object. Now, if I want to dump out the bytes of this file struct, we can call bytes on it. And there is the raw bytes that would be in a payload. And so we can use this file structure object in this way if we need to set up something custom and specific. But there's a couple common things that are done with file structure exploits, uh, such as the read and write that we're talking about right now. And so we can actually do one thing easier than this. Uh, we're going to need to send some kind of a payload. Right? Well, this payload can be defined by doing a file structure read, and we want to read to the winvar leak. And 
the num the next value is the number of bytes that I want to read. Now this value needs to be larger than the f read value. So the f read value is ten. So let's set this to twenty, and then we'll do a p interactive and call it good. So let's make that exploit script executable. And let's run it. And we see that it was calling fread, but the program hasn't exited. Right now I'm blocked on the prompt here. So what's, what's happening? Well, if I type enough A's, it says you win. Okay, so why did I need to type those A's? Well, the default value for a file structure here for the file number is zero. So if we print out the file number, we run this again. we see that the file number is zero, which is gonna be standard in. So this fread, even though this file pointer here in the source was opened, was opening secret file, by setting the file number, we made this read come from standard in. And then instead of writing to this buffer here that's sitting on the stack, we were able to change the pointers such that it overwrote this WinVar. Now, if you want to see the specifics of it, we can print out the file structure right here in our exploit ahead of time. And what do we see happened? Well, the flags value didn't matter. We didn't have to set it. Uh, the, all of these pointers were set to zero. The only ones that mattered were buff base and buff end. Those got set to the address that we need. So then when fread was called, we read from the file number here, zero. So we read from standard in and we read it in to this buffer, this buffer that we defined. Pretty cool. So, so we can do something very similar here with writing. Uh, so we have a list of requirements. Uh, we need to set the flag value to allow for writing. Uh, we need to set the write base equal to the beginning of memory that we want to write out. The write pointer terminates that region of memory that we're trying to write out. Because remember, the distance from write base to write pointer in a normal functioning buffer is the bytes that have already been written but haven't been flushed out to the file. And so we want to define what we want to leak or what we want to write out to the file in between those two pointers, write base and write pointer. Now, this fourth requirement is a little bit arbitrary, like based upon what we've kind of shown as far as what the pointers do with the buffer. But in the implementation, uh, read end has kind of a special special use case uh, for write buffers. And so we're just going to kind of accept that read end must equal write base. There's a specific check that occurs, and we want to make sure that this holds true to cause the buffer to flush. And then lastly, uh, buff end minus buff base must be larger than the number of bytes that we want to write. Uh, again, uh, in the implementation, buff end minus buff base is the size of the reserved buffer. And so we want to make sure that the buffer is big enough, in theory, you know, our theoretical buffer here that we're representing is big enough to hold what it is we're trying to write out. And so th this must hold true as well uh, in the case of writing. So here's our normal operating buffer. We see that 
Uh, buff end is the end, buff base is the beginning. So we need the buffer to be uh, large enough to hold what we're trying to write. Right base is the beginning, right end is the end, and right pointer is chilling somewhere here in the middle uh, because we're assuming that we're in a state where we have uh, written some bytes to the buffer that need to be flushed out, but there's still uh, room to write additional bytes. So what needs to happen in order to control this and write out a memory you know, memory address of our choosing. Once again, it's not that hard. Like it's not nearly as complicated as the requirements, um, you know, might make you think initially. Uh, if we set read end and write base to the beginning of the memory that we want to write out, and we set write pointer to the end of that value, and everything else to null, then we will be able to write out a secret value or a value of our choosing. So let's take a quick look at that. Here we have a vulnerable write example. Uh, we have a global secret message that is a string on the stack here. It just says secret flag value. Inside of main, we are given a leak of the address of secret message. The program itself will open dev null for writing. Uh, it's going to open it with f open. So we are using uh, that streams functionality here, which returns a file struct pointer. Uh, we're then allowed to immediately overwrite that file struct. The program will then call f write on the file pointer, and it's going to read in. 40 members of size one. So it's going to read in 40 bytes uh, and then it will exit. So let's write an exploit script here. We'll start off with our typical boilerplate. We're gonna have some process P I should probably compile this. And if we run it, very similar to the first example, if we give it enough input, it will seg fault. Now, the first thing I wanna do is capture the leak. So we'll receive until at, then we will receive line, drop the new line, convert it to an int as hex. And that is going to be the secret val leak. Now that we have that, we need to overwrite the file struct. Again, we can use pwn tools. And very similar to before we had FP read, uh, there is in fact an FP write where we can specify where we want to write and then how many bytes. In this case, the challenge wants to write 40. So we'll write 60 there. That will be our payload. And then we will send the payload and have a interactive session. So we make the exploit executable. We run the exploit and we see here that, sorry about that. Uh, we run the exploit and we see uh, that the secret value is leaked out along with a large number of bytes that immediately follow it. And so we were able to craft a file structure that turned this fwrite call instead of writing this empty buffer to dev null, 
uh, we were able to change it such that this f right wrote out this secret message or secret flag value. And then just for completeness sake, let's also print out the file structure here that we used for our payload. And we see that this follows exactly what was described earlier. Uh, the flag values are set. Uh, read end equals write base. And then the write pointer is some distance after write base. That's actually what the 60 here uh, is specifying. Uh, when I say that this value needs to be larger, this is defining the size or the distance, I should say, uh, between write base and write pointer, right? Because remember, what is actually getting dumped out is starting at write base and then ending at write pointer. And so that's why that, that um, size value is needed here. Uh, but we see that file structure exploits at their core are pretty straightforward and relatively simple to pull off uh, when you're using something like Pwn Tools.